Now, this is a story, speaking of warriors, this is a story that's 40,000 years in the making, and it is about a warrior, a hero, and a friend. Uh, Wheeler, the Kuri Warrior, is a new illustrated junior fiction book that's just been released. The namesake lead character Wheeler is brave, clever, strong-willed, and happens to be best friends with giant mega fauna animals. The story follows her journey to become a warrior. Co-author Jordan Gould is an Indigenous Australian and author illustrator Richard Pritchard is Indigenous Pacific Islander and both join me now. Welcome to Weekend Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you for having us. For anyone who's not familiar with Wheeler, give us a bit of a sense, Jordan, on who she is. Well, Willa is a Indigenous art teacher who is who loves like megafauna animals and just loves teaching in general. And it's just when her family is taken by the invading dragon army, is when she has to uh, come with the courage and go through her journey to save her people. And from that journey alone is when she is transformed into the Kuri warrior. Richard, how did your culture, your background, help to frame and inspire the story of Wheeler? Well, I'm, I'm Indigenous Samoan and I grew up um, with a very strong mother. And in our culture, the women are as much warriors as the men. So when I was inspired to, to write, to, to come up with Wheeler by Sina, another um, Australian Indigenous girl in a traditional costume, I thought to myself, if there's a dancing culture, there's also a warrior culture connected with it. And so I'm, I'm very used to seeing strong women, uh, strong Samoan women in the public eye around everywhere in New Zealand. Um, strong women are celebrated in the Māori culture. And that's what I wanted to bring to the Australian Aboriginal culture, the idea of this strong young girl who would fight for her family. Mm. Jordan, what about for you? How did you bring your culture, your language to f help to shape and frame the story of Wheeler? I, I learned a lot of my language from the local elders because I never really got to uh, grow up in that environment. So with all of the knowledge that I learned from the local elders in this area, I usually portray them to Richard and then from there, we brainstorm all the ideas together and then we kind of like um, see what we want, want this certain character to um, be like or what their characteristics. And then that's why we come up with some Aboriginal words to possibly like, probably name them in that way where they can, it, it portrays them properly in a way, and even in our language. Yeah. And we wanted to, yeah, we wanted to um, put a lot of culture in this and a lot of language to able to teach uh, younger readers as well as well as anyone, and yeah, Richard, what sort of opportunities and challenges did it throw up of of bringing different cultural aspects and history and language and story into one central character? That's a that's a good question, and, and I think with writing, anyone can write a story. But when you're dealing with culture and, and illustrating culture, you have to be really sensitive to the culture. And, and we got permission from Uncle Lockie and Uncle Rob um, in Waterville first before we started. Um, and then we ran on an enormous research um, uh, for, for months and months. We researched the history. We went through books, museums, libraries, and we dug really deep. And we brought all that we could um, discover into Wheeler. Um, and it was amazing. It was just phenomenal. We, we actually used a book by James Dawson that's 140 years old. And, and he was a guy, a Presbyterian minister, a linguistics um, professor, and his daughter lived in Port Ferry and Warnable. And they wrote this amazing document. Um, and everything that is in Wheeler is based on that document that's 140 years old. He studied the languages, the culture, what they how they woke up and what they slept on what they ate, the legends, he recorded it all down and that's how we use, that's how we based everything that's in Wheeler. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how you've managed to connect different parts of the past to create this story. Jordan, you've spoken in the past about your autism. What sort of impact did that have on you in this writing process? And I understand that you've embedded that very much 
into this book, into this storytelling? Yes, so I grew up with a uh, very pretty, pretty low functioning autism when I was younger. But over the years, I was able to kind of control it in a way where it, like, I still have tr uh, troubles like projecting my ideas onto pen and paper. And then, but when I project, uh, when I told Richard that I had that issue, he actually loved it because he normally works with uh, clients where they just speak their ideas and he puts it on paper. So our, our kind of work process in, in order to like get this book like as best as we, we possibly can is we stay up for like um, till like five in the morning on Zoom, and I just throw ideas to Richard just from from my head and just like what I've been dreaming about and what I I think it'll be really good in Wheeler, and he puts it all all on paper, and from there we really brainstorm everything out and we think about all the avenues for all all the um all the characters, each of their goals, and then. Now, it's something that's really big and, yeah, that's really lovely. Um, yeah. Jordan, just, just on that, now that this has come to fruition, your book is published, how does it feel to you to have uh, aspects of autism and your lived experience embedded here? What does it mean to, to be able to see that to, for the Australian community, to be able to read about that? It, it's, it feels really, really good to know that... Um, a lot of people out there is really interested in the story, as as well as just uh, the Aboriginal culture in general. Oh, I think we might have... In, in... Sorry, keep going. We just Sorry. lost your audio briefly, Jordan. Oh, no. <laughs> you're, ba you're back now. Uh, oh, OK, that's good. Um, but, yeah, in, in regards to the autism in the book, uh, there's a certain character in the book. Uh, his name is Poe. Um, I intentionally wanted to put him on the spectrum and give him obvious signs of autism, like low functioning autism in the book, just similar to how I was when I was when I was younger. And just to have that in there and like allow other readers to connect to Poe or just connect to any other character that has uh, suspected autism and just connect with that a lot more and just like realize the anxiety of each character that goes through as well as their difficulties, but like managed to get over those and continue on the journey, is just what makes people like makes people like really, like really connected to the story and just like more uh, in like involved in the yeah. story. R and, um, yeah, Richard. Just finally, what what does that visibility mean to you of autism of First Nations stories that that you both have spoken about with me this morning? Uh, I absolutely love it, um, and I and I think one with Aboriginal culture, what what we're seeing is what we see along the process is a, is such an undercurrent of of passion and desire within Australians that have, we've met that just want to champion, learn more, and connect with Indigenous culture. It's um it's this thing that they're attaching themselves to Wheeler and saying we can chant. This is what we've been waiting for, something we can attach our, our desires to champion culture with, and it's there, and it's real, and we've seen it, you know, we, Total Outdoor Media gave us these enormous billboards, and then no book has ever gotten that <laughs> much coverage, it's absolutely incredible, and and for kids to come to us and say, Wheel has changed our lives already, they're, they're saying, her struggles, we identify, we've overcome our struggles with that, is phenomenal, so... You know, having parents just, you know, have a sigh of relief that there is a superhero autistic character that's in the mainstream media to them is just, it's just changing their world. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It, it, is, it is incredible and so good to hear. And thank you both for sharing with so much passion with us this morning, Jordan Gould and uh, Richard Pritchard there. Uh, really grateful for your time. Thank, thank you, you so much. Well. Thank you. I want to be friends with Wheeler the Warrior. Wheeler is She sounds amazing. And, she? and all of her friends are incredible <laughs> as well. Like yeah. it's a, this whole deadly posse. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. More of it, I say. I, same, same, exactly. Bring it